I think about Lincoln Center Theater, I don't think of it initially as a member of the family, which is what I hope I am now and certainly have tried to be. I was downtown for that first season, not as a player, I assure you. I had just arrived in New York City. I was living in Brooklyn Heights. I was teaching at Hunter College. I uh, got a season uh, ticket to see After the Fall and Marco Millions and Bill Ball's Tartuffe. I remember that season vividly down in that theater that finally ended up on, in a flat car outside of Providence, Rhode Island, because Adrian Hall bought that theater when the company moved uptown. No, I go way back. My bloodlines are, are severe. But it wasn't until I was actually in residence, ensconced as artistic director of San Diego, the Globe Theater there, that I was invited to come here and work. I mean, the interesting thing about, about Lincoln Center always is it has, rem it has always been two things existing, I think, side by side. One was the sort of cultural center of the arts movement here because of where it is and, and the opera and the symphonies and all the rest of it. I mean, there, there was a lovely bouquet of culture that was beautifully situated here. It also, of course, is New York's regional theater. I suppose you can say to uh, the, the public is one, is, occupies part of that, but there can always be more than one. And Lincoln Center has had that top shelf uh, contingency all this, this time. The, where the, well, okay, where the classy stuff gets done. Uh, not that they can't be funky. They get funky from time to time. It's not funk as we all know it and love it, but it is a kind of funk. They, they, they have their finger on the pulse. There's no question about it. But if you have something shining, if you have something that you are really proud of, if you have something that you want to put in a certain light or on a particular pedestal, you wouldn't rent a Nederlander or a Schubert house to do that. You'd come to Lincoln Center. You'd go to the Beaumont. Lincoln Center is ravishingly, extravagantly uh, lucky at the moment because the oracle and ventricle happen to be, you know, Bernie Gersten and Andre Bishop, and uh, of which there is no better breed. Uh, if the right one don't get you, then the left one will. Drink the best of the wine, pluck the fruit. Seasons and moons renew themselves. I've had a very, very long friendship and close personal association with Richard Easton, who was originally in Ellis Rabb's APA Repertory Company, the company I apprenticed to as but a beamish youth. Uh, Richard was a leading man in that company. And over the years, we became friends. We toured together. We went on vacations. We were very good friends. And I invited him to the Globe to do Uncle Vanya in, uh, I guess, the 80s. And he came, and eventually, came over and spent 10 or 12 years living there and teaching at the university and doing a lot of work with me. And Richard Easton said to me, you should do Henry IV. And I said, no, no, I'm a comic. I'm a musical comedy kid. What are you talking about? I don't know anything about that. I should, he said, you're wrong. This is a great play for you. So I read it and of course, we have these wrong ideas about Shakespeare. We think these are great, sort of important, awesome plays. They are, but they're also about us. They're plays about us. How I came by the crown, oh God, forgive, and grant it may with thee in true peace live. So one of the greatest experiences of my lifetime was in doing Henry IV when I had limited amount of men, and I took one army up this way, changed the angle, changed their banners, and brought them straight down this way, and you thought, holy Moses, that's the entire armed forces of the 15th century coming at you. God, it was fun. It was really fun.
I bet there's some film of this too, of those fires going off and the and the actors, Ethan Hawke and Bill, you know all of them coming, uh, uh, crashing down. Richard Easton and these broadswords. Oh God, it was. I've never had a better time. I don't think I have any favorite productions, but my mind is alive with a million images that could only have happened here.